so classifying is just a way to group things, right? And so um, our brains, when we face something that we don't know, we try to compare it. And you guys probably think of examples of this in your own life. When you see a word or you see something and you're like, huh, I don't know what that is. Instantly, we're like, oh, it's similar to this, or it reminds me of this, or it's kind of like that, right? We want to categorize it. We want to put it with other things that are similar to it. And so that's just kind of a natural human process. Our brains are kind of wired that way. There's all kinds of studies and different things um, that kind of show this, and it's really kind of a cool thing um, how our brain works to try to put things in groups so that we can understand this new unknown. I actually took a psychology class and it went into all this and it was really interesting. Like it's something I was like, oh my gosh, I never realized that it, it's just the way our brains are wired and it's really cool. And it helps us to understand things that are unknown, things that are not, you know, um, you know, we don't know where they go, but our brain like definitely drastically wants to get them in a category, wants to get them fit somewhere. Once we have them fit somewhere, then we can make sense and we can understand it. All right, so that's kind of what this unit's gonna be about. Um, I like this quote, it says, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it's tied to everything else in the universe. So there's so many similarities. It's hard to look at one thing just in total isolation, like it is just this, right? Um, okay, I could say, so Kira is a girl. Okay, but she's not just a girl, right? She has long hair, she has green eyes? Brown, mm -hmm. hazel, I knew they weren't just brown, right? She has hazel eyes, right? She has light colored skin. Like once we determine one thing, it's like then you can like start grouping by other things. She's a teenager, right? She's an American. Like you could start classifying by all kinds of things. It's not like you're just one thing, all right? Or an object is just one thing. It fits in a lot of different categories. And that's what we're gonna see with these different types of matter. All right, so matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. So in general, matter makes up everything in our universe. The only thing that is technically not matter is energy, right? So energy like light, sound, thermal, nuclear, right? All of those are not matter because they don't take up space, okay? So one major way of classifying or categorizing matter is to identify what state it's in. And you've heard of the states of matter. What are they? Good. Solids, liquids, and gases. You've heard that since elementary. Actually, there's a fourth one that we'll talk about, and it's the plasma state. And it's just like gases that are like all hopped up, and so they're ionized gases. Um, so they have some special unique qualities above just being considered a gas. But in general, um, here on Earth, everything is in a solid, liquid, or gas form. Um, in space, plasma is more common. This is such a huge part. Just like density was such a huge part of matter, states of matter are a huge way of classifying things. It is so in-depth that when it was included in this classification of matter, it made this unit just way long. It just drove on. It was way too much. So just like with density was separated, I've also separated out states of matter. So understand, anytime you're talking states of matter, um, it's a physical change and it's going to be a huge way of classifying things, but we're going to hold off and do that as its own separate unit, right? just like we did with density. Um, but there are hundreds of other ways to classify things. We don't have to just focus solely on is it a solid, a liquid, or a gas. So physical properties, right? We mentioned this when we talked about density because density, and hopefully, I think this is the last question on your Google form, hopefully you all got this right. Density is a physical property, all right? And I had given the example, um, we talked about physical and chemical changes last year, um, or excuse me, chemical and physical weathering last year when we were talking about weathering and erosion. And I gave you the example of the sugar cookies, right? And I kind of reminded you of that. Um, if I was eating the broken pieces of sugar cookies, it was just a physical change because it was still sugar cookies. But once I ate them and then I got sick and I was throwing them up, right, they had already started to get digested. They didn't look like the same sugar cookies, right? They didn't taste the same coming back up either, I can tell you that. 
So they had been chemically changed or were in the process of getting chemically changed at the point when I saw them coming back up, all right? So physical change is just changing size or shape, but not what it's made of. A chemical change is when it's getting those bonds chemically altered. Little chemical reactions and changes are taking place and it's no longer what you started with. So physical properties is a huge way, and that's like my broken sugar cookie, right? Color, odor, hardness, density, conductivity, size, shape, viscosity, malleability, boiling, melting points, and hopefully all of those sound familiar from your vocab. We are gonna cover a ton of your vocab terminology here in the next couple days. And then chemical properties and reactivity. And again, this is like my sugar cookie being puked back up and seeing it again, no longer the same sugar cookie. Take my word for it. Hope it doesn't happen to you, but take my word. Nasty, right? It was not the same cute little Santa Claus head or a broken candy cane piece that I had eaten, um, you know, a couple hours before. So when it, we're talking reactivity, um, what does it react with or to? Right? Now, certain things, remember, we learned were more reactive than others. Um, and then finally, the third way we're going to classify is through composition. What is the substance made of? That's a pretty easy idea, really. What's it made of? How is it composed? How is it arranged or mixed together? Is it pure or is it a mixture? So obviously pure sounds like what it is. It's one exact thing. Like the metal cylinders that you guys used in the density lab, those were pure metals. They weren't alloys. They weren't mixtures of two different metals. Otherwise, the densities that we calculated would have been hard to identify because you would have been mixing two different densities together and then you wouldn't have had like a good comparison in that pure density chart. Okay? Hold on, hold on. Is it heterogeneous or homogeneous? That's how you say those words if you've been wondering in your vocab. And we'll get to that. Is it... Um, uh, differently mixed or is it the same throughout? That's basically what that means. Is it a solution? Again, more vocab terms. Terms, And this also includes mixtures and how to use their own properties to separate them. Okay. And we will go ahead and stop there.